Did the campaign known against Putin change the West's perception of Russians? The effectiveness of it remains a topic of debate since Putin did receive 87 percent of the votes. At the same time, huge lines of people that formed at noon on March 17th to vote in protest made a significant impact, at least on me. A day before the election, former U.S. ambassador to Russia Michael McFaul tweeted this, and I quote, this is Russia's war, not just Putin's. Putin only gave the order, but it is Russians who are killing people in Ukraine, not Putin. Other Russians continue to pay taxes that fund the war. A handful of brave Russians protest the war. The majority does not. I would like to discuss this tweet with its author, Michael McFaul. Good morning, Michael. Good morning. Thank you for agreeing to speak with us, Michael. You saw these long lines that formed around noon on March 17th. Has your attitude towards Russians changed after witnessing this display of civil disobedience? No, I think those were fantastic lines. I think it was a fantastic political act. I think it was the first major political act uh, for a major new politician uh, in Russia, Yulia Navalny. And as I wrote uh, yesterday in my column on Substack, the real winner of the Russian presidential election was Yulia Navalny, without question. Uh, this was her first major political act. Uh, she called on Russians to come out, echoing from her grave, uh, Alexei Navalny, to come out at noon. Uh, and, and that was the first time she'd ever done anything politically. And they did. They came out, tens of thousands of, of Russians, uh, uh, inside Russia, but all around the country, uh, all around the world as well. And so the real winner was Yulia Navalny, not Vladimir Putin. Uh, Putin, in my mind, doesn't care about elections anymore. You know, 88% is a complete joke. Uh, it means he doesn't even try to show that these were somewhat competitive elections. And therefore, we should not call this an election. Uh, we should call it a fiasco, a circus. Uh, you know, a Potemkin ritual uh, for the czar. Uh, but, but in my mind, by going so far and looking like other, you know, Kim Jong-uns of the world with 88% of the vote, there's never been in the history of democracy an election where a, a leader won 88% of the vote. He showed that he doesn't care about the elections, but at the same day, Yulia Navalny showed that she did care about the elections and she was the real winner today, yesterday. I get that, Michael. But regarding the Russian citizens that Yulia Navalny talks about a lot in her public speeches, she wrote an op-ed for the Washington Post in which she continued to talk about Russians' rights and the Western democracy's attitude towards Russians. Your tweet, however, had a lot of my colleagues doubting your true comprehension of the role of average Russians in the atrocities committed by the Russian government. My colleague journalist Andrei Zakharov responded to you saying, surely, aside from the Russian taxpayers, you will also condemn Germany that still buys Russian soil fertilizers, Austria that still buys Russian natural gas, and the U.S. that bought a record-breaking $1.2 billion worth of Russian uranium. Please be consistent. I don't want to turn our interview into a debate, but could you please address these concerns? What were you trying to say, and do you really think that all Russians are responsible for the war in Ukraine? And what do you think about the, frankly, hypocritical stance of some of the Western countries? My position is crystal clear. Uh, with all due respect, I haven't seen that tweet from Mr. Zakharov, but I, I, my position is clear. Of course, Western democracy should stop making money in Russia. Uh, I run, I've run a sanctions group for three years, calling on all companies to leave Russia, uh, and we've tried to impose the greatest amount of sanctions that we can. I think Russia should be called a terrorist state and be on the terrorist list in the United States of America. I think all Russian government assets deposited in Brussels and Germany and the United States should be handed over to the Ukrainians. Uh, I could go on and on and on. I, my personal position is very consistent. Uh, likewise, I want to underscore, I did not write and never have written that all Russians are responsible for the war. What I am trying to say is the idea that you can't do anything against the war because of Putin's totalitarian dictatorship. I said, and I've written about this many times, do something. And that's why, so I don't care what it is, but do something. Show in your own small little way that you do not support this regime. And there are all kinds of little things, people more expert than I, 
are trying to get Russians to do that you can do. Uh, and that's why Sunday was such an inspirational moment, because people did something. Um, I get it. I, if I were living in Russia, I wouldn't protest against the war and go to jail like other people. I'm not that brave. I would admit that very bluntly. But what one can do is they're called nonviolent acts of civic resistance. And just to say that it's Putin's war and we have no responsibility is just like American companies saying, well, you know, we have to sell our cookies in Russia. Uh, our motivation is profits. We can't do anything about that. I disagree with those American companies and I disagree with Russians that say there's nothing that can be done. There are even little tiny things that you can do, uh, you can do. And by the way, if you do them, I guarantee you, it will feel good. It will feel good. A little protest on a, a, a small little thing, calling one person to say, isn't this war horrible? Putting on a, a, a website, uh, you know, for um, uh, giving uh, grades to a restaurant to talk about the war. Something small, I guarantee you, it'll feel better than doing nothing. Another worldview demands some incredible feats of strength from average Russians, when even the U.S. government isn't willing to do so much as to symbolically reject Putin as the leader of Russia, when he wins with a hardly possible 87 percent of the votes. Isn't there an inherent contradiction in that all Russians should be held accountable, while at the same time the entirety of the Western world, in all its power, wouldn't even go for a symbolic gesture against Putin's tyranny. Another worldview demands some incredible feats of strength from average Russians when even the U.S. government isn't willing to do so much as to symbolically reject Putin as the leader of Russia when he wins with a hardly possible 87 percent of the votes. Isn't there an inherent contradiction in that all Russians should be held accountable, while at the same time the entirety of the Western world in all its power wouldn't even go for a symbolic gesture against Putin's tyranny. Yes, and the world's filled with contradictions. Get used to it. Yeah. That's the real world. But that doesn't give people an excuse yeah, to say they don't have uh, advietsvenist. To me, um, uh, you know, I've been playing the whataboutism game with Russians for many, many decades. When I was ambassador, anytime I said anything critical, what about this? What about this? What about this? I get it. There's hypocrisy in the world. Yes, a lesson. I understand there's hypocrisy in the world. But hypocrisy does not give somebody the right to be passive in front of horrors, in front of barbaric terrorism. And just like I get up every day and try to think, what can I do to lobby my country to stop this horrible, barbaric war in Ukraine? And for me right now, that's trying to get new weapons to Ukraine. That's what I'm doing right now, to try to get Speaker Johnson to get to stop blocking the vote to send $50 billion of new military assistance. That's the most important thing that I can do. And I look for ways to do that every day. And so I call upon anybody that's against this horrific war, whether you're living in Switzerland or Russia, to think about some small way that you can get up every morning to demonstrate to your own self, to live with your own values, to say uh, and to do something to show that you don't support this war. I'm not calling on anybody to go to jail. I'm not calling on anybody to, to, to do the ultimate sacrifice that people like Alexei Navalny or Boris Nemtsov did, but I, I do call on people to not be passive and not say that it's just that, that somebody else's yeah. war. Uh, just like when my country invaded Iraq and I thought it was against, uh, it was wrong to do that. I think it was a, a responsibility of me as a citizen to try to do something to stop that war. And I realize the conditions in Russia are much more difficult to do that. But I think it's to be a real citizen means to participate in the policies of your country. That's the essence of citizenship. I'm certainly not defending any stances of whataboutism or anything like that. I just want our viewers to understand your position as clearly and profoundly as possible. This has been Michael McFall, former U.S. ambassador to Russia. Thank you very much for joining us today.